Dragon Slayer Media presents Rich Gaspari and John Romano in Fitness, Fame, and Fortune. Welcome to another episode of Fitness, Fame, and Fortune. I'm here with my co-host, Rich Gaspari, and our special guest, Richie, I want you as a as a Jersey as a Jersey Shore guy to introduce our Jersey Shore guest. <laughs> Well, this is uh, Roger Matthews. He's uh, he's an original from the Jersey Shore. You know, I I moved into. I wasn't always a Jersey Shore guy because I lived in Central Jersey in Edison. But I've been down Tom's River area for the past, I think, what is it, seven years? I've been living in this area. And I didn't even know, you know, Roger still lived in this area when I used to watch the show. So I mean, you know, knowing him as actually, have we met Roger? We have, yeah, we have, we've. Uh, I see you around town quite a bit, actually. You're, <laughs> you're pretty much right on the other side of Fisher Boulevard for me, man. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 we, we've met, but I've just like we've always talked through, you know, through text and. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw, you know, well, I saw you at the Attila's Gym event. I, I, that's you know, right. I, that's right. Yeah, I've seen you around a lot. Obviously, Frankie and I are close. You and Frankie used to work together a lot, so. Yeah. So Frankie was at Frankie was one of uh, Gasparri's athletes. Yep. So uh, Roger has a podcast, which we're, I'm going to go on mm -hmm. on his show with Frankie Edgar. So I said, let's get Roger on our show. You know, so we you know, our different uh, fan bases we can you know uh, share. Yeah, <laughs> that's show, a great so. idea. Just so our fans know exactly who Roger is. Roger was on the show Jersey Shore. And you are Jay Wow's boyfriend, right? I was at the time. We uh we have two right. kids together. Uh, unfortunately, we are now uh, divorced. However, we still remain friends. Uh, I was actually just talking to her. We got uh, two kids playing sports now, so it keeps us. We're quite busy with that. We have a son in soccer. We have a daughter doing cheer now. Uh, she's eight. My son is six. Um, so yeah, we're uh, you know you're you're. Sometimes relationships don't work out, but you're forever parents and you're forever got to go co-parent, you know, so. And I and I see you're a really good father, Roger, because I, I look, you know, I follow you on Instagram and you're always posting your your kids and, and activities that you're doing from fishing to boating to <laughs> all the stuff that you do. So, you know, you're a, you're a good father. So when um, I was a kid, right, my, my, my mom had a photo album, right? I'm old school. I'm, 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 you and I aren't that far apart, Rich. I was born in 75, <laughs> but. My mom, you know, took took the Polaroids or whatever, took the took the rolls of film that you used to have to go get developed and put them in, you know, a, a photo album, you know, and that's you'd flip right. years later. And now I feel like I build my own on Instagram. That's kind of my photo album. So when I'm not here anymore, my kids can can go through my Instagram and be like, holy crap, we had a lot of fun with that. You know, we did this, <laughs> we did this, we did this. So. So cool. Now, what about what about the episodes of Jersey Shore? Are you gonna let your kids? Watch <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I mean, listen, I don't, I, I don't know how long I can stop them for. I mean, <laughs> the internet's a powerful thing, and they're already on it. So, um, would it be? You know, would it? Am I trying to hide it from them? No, it was. You know, they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that show. So. Um, you know, I'm not trying to hide it from him, but certainly there's uh, there's a lot of embarrassing things that happen on it. A lot of things. <laughs> I was a lot younger. So, so I got to ask you because you know Richie was married to a to a girl from Jersey. I've dated a couple of them. You were married to one. I got other friends in Jersey who are, who are with Jersey girls. What is wrong with them? What, <laughs> what, 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 what? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm yeah, I'm a Maine boy. I grew up in a little tiny really? town in Maine, and I moved to Jersey. My mom's originally from Jersey, so from from up north, uh, mm -hmm. Rock. She's from originally, um, but she, her, and my dad were married for 25 years. So I grew up in Maine. I didn't even move to Jersey until I was 22. And a big part of the reason that I moved here was because of how the Jersey girls look. The problem, is, <laughs> the problem is they look really good, but they're really mean most of them. You know? Yeah, they're mean. <laughs> they, they're a breed, all of them to them, all of them to themselves. Don't you think they're different from any other girls? I've, you know, if you want to, you know, geographically plot them. I mean, they're just different. They're yeah. just totally different. Mean. Listen, yeah. listen mean. not that I'm making excuses for my ex. She can. She's pretty good at fighting her own battles. But she would say she's not a Jersey girl. She's actually from like Albany, New York. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it takes, it takes a 
offense if she gets called to Jersey. Goes, she is now. She lives here. Yeah, now. once you once you live here, you get stuck in being. But you're right that the really the really hot ones are the the most meanest. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the 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 day I saw her. It was before the show was even bought, before it was even sold. They were kind of like filming a pilot. It was it was what is now known as season one, but at the time didn't even have a name. You know, they hadn't even named the show. They were just you know filming a conceptual idea. And I, I, you know, I was a local guy by that point. I'd moved here. I moved here in 98. Um, and this is around 2000, maybe nine. And she walked into karma, which is gone now, but she walked in and, and I swear she was just wearing a handkerchief, you know, on her top. And I was like, who's that girl? And before I knew it, there was cameras on her. And I was like, you know, as a local guy, you see it all the time. You see MTV has filmed a ton of shows here. And you kind of steer clear of it, you know, like locals don't really get too wrapped up in that. It's usually people from New York or whatever. But uh, my buddy who I was with was dating a young girl. And of course, she was all about it. So before I knew it, she had gone out and dragged this girl back over to the bar where we were. My, my, my friend was bartending and uh, it was, lo and behold, it was it was Wow. So uh, the rest is kind of history. You know, that was uh, that was 10 years of my life. So. so did you ever think that this show would become such a big hit? Because when you look at it, I, I go, you know, I travel the world and they found out I'm from Jersey and they go, oh, Jersey Shore. Yep. You know, and every, everywhere I've gone because of my brand, I, you know, I go to Italy or I yep. go to Japan and they always mention the Jersey Shore. I'm like, wow, that show had such a reach. You know, yeah. that, you know, if, as soon as I say from Jersey, are, are you a, you know, a Jersey Shore guy? You know, so it's just funny how that popularized you know the silly stuff that you guys did but it popularized you know jersey so much but did you think this would be so big no no not at all I mean, <laughs> and i got you got to remember I, I i was never a cast member i didn't try out for the show i wasn't trying to be on the show um but a pretty girl drew me in and um you know it was a was you know wrapped up with it for god we were together almost about nine years i guess so it was about nine years of my life and believe it or not rich i mean we haven't been together in three years they are still filming that show still and really? i'm not on them in any way shape or form i still get along with everybody just fine it, my kids are gonna have a really bright future mom does well with that show and they're gonna go to a really good college because of that show so i'm not hating them, you know what i mean but uh yeah. did i think it would have the impact that it did that i think Kind of because I was early on in it, you know, I was before it was even on on it was even sold, you know, so like uh, we met that first season one, if you want to call it when they were, you know, what turned into be season one. And then she came back season three. And that was like at the height of it. That was the pinnacle of it. You know, now I feel like there's so many shows out there. It's hard to get those ratings down. You know, they were getting like 10 million viewers you know per episode and um that's insane um but now it's it's really hard to get those numbers now because you know it's so oversaturated the reality market the tv is just it's just so oversaturated so um hard to get those numbers but yeah so at that time it was it was very overwhelming extremely overwhelming especially not you know every day i left that house i went to a normal job those guys that was their that was their job that was no it, it you know, like you said, it I, it was at the right it was at the right time yep. when these type of shows came about. It, it's I guess one of the first, <laughs> and once it became so popular, now you have so many trying to duplicate it, but they can't duplicate it, right. and then it saturated the market. It's almost like my industry in supplements. I got into this over twenty some years ago, you know, getting into selling sports nutrition, and now every Tom, Dick, and Harry sells. You know, every pro, I was one of the I was one of the first. It was me and Labrata. And it, now how many pros sell their own brand? It's just they all sell brands. Right. So whenever there's whenever there's a place where there's money or popularity, people are gonna gravitate to it. It's and it's and it's similar to the situation with Jersey Shore. Yeah. It was a perfect storm, perfect timing, perfect everything. I mean, everybody loves a car crash, right? It was a little bit of a car crash. <laughs> but, you know, there was a couple things that kind of pushed it, too. Um, there was the, the, I think it was the Italian-American organization was really upset about uh, the use of the Italian flag on the house. And that really, like, any publicity at that time was good publicity. So yeah. that kind of skyrocketed. That really helped it promote the show. And then uh, early on, some scumbag uh, 
you know, uh, punched Nicole in the side of her head in a bar. Yeah, I remember that. That, like, you know, that that kind of just rocketed the show into to infamy at that point, and it took yeah. off, you know? What what do you think about that Jersey Shore mystique? That, that, that I mean, there's there's a few places in the country where you can say they got their own aura. You know, Miami South Beach is one. You know, El, you know Venice Beach uh, out in L.A. Probably Fort Lauderdale. Um, but Jersey Shore, man, it's like there's a thing. There's a thing about it. People know the names of clubs. They know the the who's fighting who. I mean, it, it's like why is that? What do you think uh, is it about? the Jersey shore that makes it such a magnet enough to have a freaking successful reality show. I there. would could explain it. You'd have to be from here to explain it, you know, and you know, when you're talking to somebody from here, because they'll tell you how to get somewhere by the exit you get off on the parkway. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> you're like, all right, well, that's a local. I'm talking to a local, but I don't know. I mean, as it's, it's you know, Rich can tell you, like, I, I, I grew up in Maine and I was 20, I think I was 21 or 22 when I moved here and a li small town living, there was no gyms where I grew up. I mean, my high school didn't even have weights in it. You know, I, the YMCA was the closest gym to me and it was probably an hour ride away. And you got to remember Maine winters are brutal. So sometimes you'd be driving in a foot of snow to get there. Right. And it was, a, it was kind of a crap old gym at that. And then I come to Jersey, you know, this, this flannel shirt wearing hillbilly, and I look around and everybody's going to clubs, you know, that, that if you're into going out, you know, if you're not, if you're not a homebody, which I was, I was 22, I was, you know, but I was a skinny kid, skinny, tall kid, lanky kid from Maine. And I'm looking around and everybody from the Jersey Shore is fucking jacked. You know what I mean? So yeah. I got to get in shape, you know? So like one of the first things I did when I, when I moved here was join a gym and I had no idea how to lift or what I was doing. I had no clue, but I kind of just figured it out because if you wanna, if you're attracted to those Jersey girls that you're talking about, they want, they want, they want a, you know, a guy with muscles, you know. So, <laughs> but <laughs> that, but that whole era, I mean, it drew everybody into work. I mean, there was a, a workout party scene, you know, like it was definitely big in Miami, um, definitely in New York in the city. Um, and Jersey Shore, I mean, you hear people say, "Are you from Belmar?" Or you know, where they, I mean, they know names, you know, so. Yeah. But all the guys, definitely the difference. There are more jacked guys in on the Jersey Shore out partying with their shirts off in a club than I, where else in the, in the freaking world? You'd have to go to probably Europe, you know, to 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 find another scene to rival that. You, don't you think? Sales for guinea tees and cut off shirts have to be the highest, you know, in the Jersey Shore area than any other place in the world. It has to be. Per capita, by the way. <laughs> nobody wears nobody wears a long sleeve shirt or or even a shirt with sleeve. I mean, this 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 is a long sleeve shirt for Jersey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, do you know Greg Valentino? I know who he is. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, he was he was uh, supposed to be good friends with Snooky. I don't and... know. I don't know about that, but he did film something. I believe it was for MTV. Yeah. That, Everybody watched that. You know what I mean? I watched that documentary. The guy, the man with the largest arms in the world. Exploding arms, like yeah. <laughs> it's exploding arms, man. Yeah. yeah. But they don't tell you. Because I can remember watching that back when I was not a big guy at all and uh, thinking, Jesus Christ, this guy's fucking huge. And then, you know, my buddy told me, yeah, you meet him, and he's 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 about five feet tall. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But it's funny. It's the 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 rage of the short bodybuilders but it's it's funny since that show I, I it changed like you go to like you said seaside the clubs are all gone yeah. I, I i heard they wanted to do another i guess another show and they wouldn't the town wouldn't allow them to do it because it just cost so much havoc in the in the town so there the nightlife there is gone like it was back when you know when that show was big yeah and uh, I don't know where the nightlife is now. Like around, well, I'm too old to go out tonight. I don't go to clubs anymore, anyways. But you know, Belmar has a little bit of it. And um, yep. but I remember the same thing. Like Karma. What was the other place in uh, Bamboo, Hemingways? Yeah, yeah, all those clubs. They're yeah. all and uh, went the way of the dinosaur. But again, you got to remember there was a number of things that happened. There was there was um, Hurricane Sandy happened, which I mean it took. It took Surf Club and put it right out in the ocean. That's completely yeah, surf, club. surf Club was a legendary spot. 
Um, and then Jersey Shore leaving, obviously, them, you know, being done for a bunch of years before they brought it back. They left. That brought a lot of people in. And then the boardwalk fire. So it was like a trifecta of things that happened that really kind of killed killed the, the nightlife as we know it in Seaside, you know. It can still do that. Was. I'm sorry. How, how how reality? How real is the reality on that show? I mean, is that, that really? Is it what's scripted? What's not? I mean, is it? How, how do you? Because it it's, it flows. So there's got to be something behind it. That's the number one question I'm asked by far. That's the number one question I get, and and I always give the same answer. And again, I'm not shitting on the show in any way. It it, uh, it was good to me in that it provided me with, you know, a happy 10 years of my life and two beautiful children. And I would do it all over again to have that. So uh, I'm not going to shit on it in any way, but I'll, I'll give you an honest, I'll give you the honest answer, which is that it's not scripted. They don't tell you what to say. They don't tell you what to do. Nobody rushes in and is like, say this, start a fight, do this. But it's put together in a way where it's really hard for drama not to happen. I mean, you're, you're, you're put in a house with 10 other people they take away cell phones. They take there's no TVs. There's no computers. They take away pen and paper, so you can't even write a fucking note, right? The only way you can interact is to conversate with each other. And there's like 46 fucking cameras around, you know, between mounted in the ceiling and got so they're capturing every moment that happens. And then you add a whole bunch of alcohol. You cast a whole bunch of people with these very eccentric personalities, and you got fucking fireworks. It was the perfect storm. You know what I mean? So um, everybody, I hear it all the time. Anybody can do that show. All you got to do is get drunk. It's not really true. You know, everybody thinks they're interesting until you put a camera on them, you know, and then uh, you're not that interesting. But uh, it's, it's you have to have the dynamic in the personalities. That definitely helps. And the other thing is you can't just do whatever you want. You know, like they're not, your question was how much of it is scripted? How much of it is, are you told what to do? I, w I wouldn't say any of that, but you can't do whatever you want. For example, if you want to go eat, you can't just say, hey, I'm leaving. I'm jumping in the star car and going to ShopRite. You know, ShopRite is a franchise. They don't allow cameras. And it has to be like a mom and pop place or, or a privately owned bar or something like that. You can't franchises. You can't go in and you can't just jump in a car and go. It's a fucking process. Like everybody has yeah. to go. You got to get in a car. So, you know, there's there's that. You know what I mean? Is it is sure. it 20? Is it 24 seven? Yeah. They're, they're, okay. So it's like they're just everything about you is your life is just, you know. So, so I mean, if you were if you were sleeping, you know, and there's nothing going on, there's not a camera guy standing over your head. But if you wake up and, you know, for something other than just to take a leak and there's any kind of action there, there's they come they come running out of the woodwork from somewhere <laughs> from some back trail or in the back. Plus, there's all the mounted ones in the ceiling, you know, constantly. The eye in the sky is always, always recording, you know. So, and it's funny. I went went to that house. It's a very, it's just a very small little. Not what you think it is. No, it's very small. Oh, I, it's even not... even me when I watch it on camera, I'm like, shit. This place looks clean. This place looks nice. This place <laughs> fucking shit hole. Yeah, it's a real so, shit hole. So, I mean, what, it... about, what about like the 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 the, on lo the location stuff? Like, for example, I'll, I'll give you one. I'll give you one scenario, and you tell me how it worked. Okay. You're in a bar with uh, with your girl. Some dude is, you know, harassing her. He pulls her dress, and you fucking punch the guy. That right? actually happened. I know. I, that's yeah. why I'm. That's yeah. the example <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you. <laughs> <laughs> so now the the ramifications from that are the cameras are there watching. Did they instigate that? Did the family of the guy that you whacked sue them for you know stirring it up? I mean, Not how do you get? How do you get? How do you get a fight on camera like that and, and, and get away with it? That that I can tell you 100% with complete and utmost honesty. It happened completely organically. It really, truly did. Never seen that guy before in my life. Neither did they. He wasn't put up to it. He probably could have pressed charges. I think it helps a lot that I'm a local and I know all the bouncers and shit like that. They're probably like, yeah, yeah, okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who that guy was, but, you know, <laughs> it probably helped because I wasn't, you know, I, I, I'm from the area and I knew all those guys. I bounced in Seaside for a couple of years. You know, so that probably helped a little bit. The other thing was, you know, like like he was he could have probably caught charges for groping a girl. So I'm sure he didn't he didn't he probably just wanted it to be over with. As a matter of fact, he got locked up that night. But um, yeah, no. Um, after that happened, it never made camera. But his buddy, who was in the military, I think he maybe was in the military too, um, came up to me afterward and apologized. Said, "I'm sorry, my friend was a real dickhead." You know, me and me and his buddy ended up having a bunch of drinks after that. So. <laughs> 
That's kind of cool. So, <laughs> so but you, about the, the things about the show you look back on to this day. You know, I, I, I've, I'm a dad now, obviously. We had two beautiful children, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, they're my life, you know. And people will, will comment that remember the show because it has, like, a cult following and say, do you remember the comment you made to Jenny when you guys first met that you said you can't stand kids and you fucking hate Christmas and all this? And I'm like, I was, it was a joke. Like, I was trying, <laughs> like, if people thought I was serious, I was trying to make her laugh. And I don't think she got it. So it kind of fell flat. But I'm like, no, I, of course I like kids, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I heard that there was a, there was another um, Jersey Shore that was coming about with a new cast. I actually know because I'm, you know, I go to um, LA Fitness and one of the fathers to one of these kids. Um, that was supposed to be in the show. He's actually one. Of, he's an affiliate. I don't know much more than that, but then they said they were going to do the show, but somehow the show now is being held back because of the, the the cast of the Jersey yeah. Shore. Letting I don't this know much about it. Obviously, I'm not really involved in it anymore. But I heard the same thing, Rich. I saw. Yeah. I, I was out. I don't go out a lot, but I was out one one night this summer. I was at Jenks. You want to talk? You want to feel like an old man? Go to Jenks. Holy. <laughs> Oh, like a pedophile. I was literally there for a half hour and we left. Me and the girl were there. But uh, some kid, random kid, came up to me and said he's in the, the new season and started yeah. asking all these questions. And I was I was like, bro, I, don't, I mean, good luck to you. That's all I can tell you. So I don't know. But I met some kid that said he was part of it. And as far as I know, nothing's ever come of it. So I guess it was shut down or it's on hold or whatever. Like you said, I don't really know. Yeah, it's on hold. For the, what, from what I'm hearing is that the original cast wants to get a piece of that show. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go further than that, but that's what I'm hearing. I'm sure there are a lot of them feel like they're married to this show, like it's their baby. They have put a, you know, to shit. I what 2009? What are we? 20, almost 2023. I mean, that's a long time for a reality show. It's a long yeah. time for a reality show to be going on. You know, definitely. So, uh, what about now? Are you guys? Are you, are you still friends with those people? Do you hang out together? Do you? Yeah, no, I wouldn't say, I mean, I wouldn't say enemies. I would say that, you know, we don't talk a lot. Um, I used to talk to Ronnie a lot every time he came back to Jersey. We'd always hang out, grab some lunch or whatever. Haven't seen him in a little bit. I know he's a dad now, too. Um, I believe he's still on the West Coast. Haven't talked to him in a bit, but we used to talk quite a bit. Um, once in a blue moon, I'm going to uh, Dina's son's uh, party coming up here soon. So I'll see a few of them there. Um, you know, it's all good. It's all, you know, everything's everything's copacetic now everything's cool wish everybody well but uh and my friends no because i'm you know i'm not really in that circle anymore obviously we're divorced now um but friendly yeah we're friendly you know yeah you you said you worked your job you, you did you always work your job through the whole show yeah. you work the same job now what do you do yeah, yeah, I work. Uh, I'm a teamster. I'm uh, I, I drive uh, hazmat tankers for a living. I've been there for 24 years, so oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I was there way before that show ever uh, started. As a matter of fact, I had to call out a couple times on the duck phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got a little too banged up and had to pick up the duck phone and call my boss. He got quite a kick out of it that he was on, he was on uh, TV. You know, he thought it was funny. What do you say? You know, I just had too much to drink. I can't make it to work. I, I'm banged up. I'm not going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you, you still train? A little bit. It's harder now. I mean, listen, I fucking hate excuses. That's the bottom line. You can always find a reason. So the bottom line is I'm a little lazier than I used to be. But yeah, I still train. I'm actually uh, got a haircut here in a, in a half hour. And then I'm going to the gym after that. So so we're going to, Roger, I, you know, I told you, I said we're going to get a workout together. You no, know, brother. I'm, 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 I, there's not really any great gyms here. I hate to say, but you know, LA fitness, you know, these franchise gyms, the real good hardcore gyms, like you got to go to like a Tillis, like you went to, to really get a good workout. And that's a hardcore gym. Otherwise it's, you got it. You got crunch LA fitness. I've been to them all, man. I go to a, a small family owned one KS fitness, not a very big gym, but I've been there forever. It's got what I need. I don't need a Olympic sized pool. I don't need a basketball court. I yeah. speak weights and uh, not even as heavy as, as they used to be. I used to need the, the 150s. I don't even need those anymore, you know, but uh, yeah. yeah, you. yeah I'm, not, I'm not using the 150s anymore either. No, hell how, no. How much I'm, fight training do you do? What's that? How much fight training do you do? Fight? Fight, yeah. Like, fight fight training. Fight training. 
no, nope, none. I've never, I've never trained. You got, I didn't move here again until I was 22. Had no wrestling background because my high school didn't offer it. I wish, I wish. Um, you know, I'm good friends with Frankie Edgar, obviously. Have a podcast together. I've been a huge fight fan since the beginning of UFC. Very mm -hmm. into it, but never trained. I trained with Frankie a little bit back in the day. There's a picture of him arm barring me back in the day, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, Steve Rivera, great guy. I'm sure you know who he is, Rich. Um, big into wrestling. He had yeah. uh, behind his house, he had what they called the barn back in the day. And uh, it was very old school. It was a horse barn that they, they transferred into like a wrestling MMA kind of mat area to train. And Rich, uh, excuse me, Steve and uh, Frankie used to teach some MMA classes in there back in the days. And I did that. I did that a little bit. But, uh, you know, you need a base. You need a wrestling base. You need you need some sort of base. If you're going to be a fighter on on a professional level, you you need to start really young. That's that's key. And I I never even hit a mat until I was fucking thirty something. You know, so well, yeah. And and you got to be a born puncher. You can't yeah. you can't you can't teach somebody how to punch hard. It's either no. See, I, I kind of disagree with you. You can't. In my opinion, you can. You can teach, but you what you can't teach somebody is to have heart. You can't give somebody yeah, heart. Definitely. No, I, I mean, like, Frank, Frankie's a good. Example. I'm sorry. But if somebody can rob your will, especially early in a fight, they take your will out of you. Which mm -hmm. is, I mean, a lot of guys have the ability to do that now. You can't train that. That's something you can't train. You can teach no. somebody how to fight. You can teach somebody right. how to wrestle. You can teach somebody how to – obviously, there's, there's levels to that game, but uh, you can't teach heart. And that's what I think Frankie brings to the table better than anybody Definitely. else. Frankie's like the Rocky of the heart. <laughs> like. That's what they call him, man. And I really think that is a jersey thing. That's a that's – a, yeah. You know, how, how did he end up asking you to do a podcast? That was <laughs> funny. Story. So, so I used to be, uh, used to be big into motorcycles. I still am, but I used to ride for a pro team doing <laughs> like uh freestyle stunt stuff. Used to travel. Oh, cool. I was never really, really good at it, but I used to get hurt a lot and think I was good at it. But anyway, <laughs> um, he had a motorcycle and I was always a Frankie fan. I met him a few times. We had a bunch of mutual friends. And he started teaching this MMA class, like I was talking about, at the barn. This is probably around, God, maybe uh, before I before I did the MTV, maybe maybe late, maybe two thousand seven, eight, something like that. And somebody told me about it. They was teaching these classes. I was like, man, I gotta I gotta get over there, you know. So I started going a couple of days a week, rolling with him and stuff, just because I was a Frankie fan, man. You know, it was just cool to hang out with him. And a couple of times he showed up on his motorcycle, you know, he had a, had a, like a CBR 600 cross rocket, you know, and I had one too, but I could, I could throw down pretty good. So we rode home together one time and um, I was like, just beating on this bike, doing crazy wheelies and just, you know, riding wheelies for like five miles and stuff and uh, showing off. I was trying to show off basically for Frankie and I ended up, I ended up crashing right in front of him. He almost ran over. And after that, we just became really, really close friends. And uh, one day he passed me. I was working and he was on his way training. He passed me. I was in the work truck and he called me. And Frankie is, he doesn't like, ask, if you know him at all, he doesn't like asking for anything. He doesn't like bothering anybody. He does He's just very, to him, very humble guy. Like, he doesn't like, like, Rich, you, you guys have known each other forever. And I'm the one that had to reach out to you to get you on the show. You know, I'm like, Frankie, we'll yeah. just call Rich, you know. He's like, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't like doing that shit, you know. So, <laughs> so anyway, he passed me. And he called me and he's like, hey, man, what's up? What are you doing? I just saw you. He's like, hey, have you, this is how, exactly how he worded it. Have you ever thought about doing a podcast? Like just out of the blue. I was like, I thought he just meant me. You know, I'm like, no, man, never, never really thought about it. You know, at the time I only knew of like Joe Rogan. That was probably the only podcast I'd ever heard of. And I was like, no, man, I never thought of it. He's like, all right. Okay, cool. Have a good day. I'll talk to you later. What he meant was. Hey man, we should we should totally do a podcast together. That's what he meant. Yeah. So it took like a year went by, and his a training partner, his all, another UFC fighter, Chris Ligori. Um, I don't know if you guys if you know him, Rich or not. Um, mm. he's another local guy. But anyway, uh, fought in the UFC. Um, hit me up, DM me on Instagram. I was like, hey man, you and Frankie should totally get together and do a podcast together. You guys come from completely different backgrounds, completely different worlds. What he brings to the table, you bring something else. You know, and then the light bulb went off. I was like, holy shit, that's what that's what Frankie meant a year ago when he called me. You know, so <laughs> yeah, it took him a year. <laughs> yeah, it took a year. Yeah. Well, at least it sunk in eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you when did you start the podcast? 
like two years ago. Yeah, I think we're uh, on ex uh, episode 150 now. We've got about 150 episodes under our belt. Wow. Where are we, John? <clears throat> 75. So, you know, we, we started this because of the pandemic. Yep. We're like, what do we do? Like, we are stuck, <laughs> we're stuck yeah. in the house. <laughs> so we're like, let's start a <laughs> podcast. Located, John. I'm in What's South that? Carolina. Okay, right on. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I, I don't know if you, you know, John, we've been friends for a long time since I was, you know, competing shit in my early 20s. And yeah. he was one of the guys that I met in Venice, you know, California when I, when I was living in California. And he helped me actually prepare for a show giving me deep tissue massage, you know, for the Olympia. So we've been, we've been friends for years and, uh, you know, he's been with, uh, muscle and fitness, muscular development with, you know, Dave Palumbo. And he's now working, you know, for me as a, as a copywriter for Gaspari nutrition. Wow. So we decided to do this, you know, this podcast together. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't, and, doesn't uh, does Palumbo and Lee Priest have a podcast together? Well, we 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 have Dave. Dave and I founded the RxMuscle.com the, when we left Muscular Development. Okay, and and under under that umbrella, there's several podcasts, and one of them is is called Iron Rage, and that's uh, Lee Priest and Dave. I've done that podcast. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good dudes. Yeah, Lee Priest is a legend. Yeah, he's he's, 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 he's still kick, he's still kicking. <laughs> I, 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 the the amount that size on that guy and that guy is a genetic freak. He's a, freak. it's not like, you know, he took a ton of you know <clears throat> steroids to look like that. That guy is just he didn't. He, he's a genetic freak yeah, and um, still look like that today. It's crazy. We he's say fifty. He's fifty years old and he yeah. still looks the way he did when he competed. And all he did was pick up the win. I, I mean, John, you know him better. I mean, he just started training. He didn't train for a while. He well, started. what happened was he was he was injured. He had that. Oh, neck, he had the same had thing that, that I had. Right, and then he got. It was a couple of years before he got that sorted out and was able to actually train again. And so, the thing about Lee is Lee, you know, Lee, Lee and like Dexter is the same way. Is that they never trained so much and put so much wear and tear on their on their bodies. Like some of these guys training six, seven hours a day, you know, three hours of cardio. And I mean, those guys hammered their body. I mean, look at Ronnie Coleman. I mean, he's, you know, 17 yeah. surgeries and a wheelchair later, you know, um, the, the, the guys who didn't put that, didn't beat their bodies all that bad. Richie's kind of like on the cusp. He beat himself up. I beat myself up pretty, pretty bad. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> he's paying for it now. But, um, you know, guys that, you know, that didn't or see Sean Ray, you know, he, he never he never trained that, you know, crazy and, and, and hard. And he's still, you know, never got injured. There's there's guys who just, you know, didn't put that many miles on and were able to, you know, pick it back up. Lee, of course, add that to the fact that he's a genetic freak. He's probably myostatin negative like like Richie. And and um, he's just ridiculously huge. I mean, he's yeah. got. You know, I, he was I, meant I mean, to be a bodybuilder, and he's a and he's really uh, real. You know, like he's a guy that you get to know him. You you just like him, but I mean, he gets it's just he's funny on his social media how he just like blasts people for stupid. It's what you want to say to people, but he just says it. You know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's like he's like Donald Trump. Yeah, he's like Donald <laughs> Trump. <laughs> bodybuilder. Yeah. He was still banned when I did his uh, his uh, podcast. He was trying to get back on somehow. He didn't give that much of a crap about it, though. He's like, ah, fuck it. They'll just ban me well, again. He, he Actually, he and I were banned at the same time in like 2012, 10 or 12. And he and I did a podcast together at, under the umbrella of VPX Sports. Jack, you know, that, that's Bang Energy, man. It's Bang, you know, the drink now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we had the it was the VPX Shotgun Big Show, and it was the, Lee and I together. We were just ragging on everybody. <laughs> if we had enemies, then we made better enemies out of them. <laughs> awesome, man. So like you're you're you like I mean you're a Jersey now. You become a Jersey guy, just like I've been in Jersey, and I've seen the world. I always end up in Jersey, you know, like and I've been everywhere, Roger, I've been, you know, so many different countries and, you know, from, you know, I've been very fortunate to really travel with being who I am as a, not only a bodybuilder, but through my brand, but I always end up here and I've always wanted to live on the, on the water in Jersey. And, you know, fortunately now I have a house like right on the, on the, you know, the Barnegat Bay, which I love, you know, living here. 
Um, do you feel the same way? Do you, is this something like you're here or would you go out to, you know, I don't know, Florida or somewhere else? I mean, John left New York because he was tired of <laughs> the Northeast. <laughs> There's oh, something you. Okay. you said it. I mean, you, you really said it in a nutshell, Rich. There's just something about Jersey. I love it. I can name a million things about it. I hate. I can't stand the politics. I can't stand the corruption. I yeah. can't stand a bunch of shit about it. But something about it, man. I call it home. I love it. You know, it's the exact opposite of where I grew up, which I also love. Very much love Maine and 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 sort of the integrity and and the people up there. I love, but I just love Jersey Shore. And it's funny you said that because uh, we don't live far apart, but your little neighborhood over there you're in, me and the girl yeah. are on the bikes. We always usually cross over Fisher and ride through that neighborhood. We're always like, we're going to end up on this side one day. We're going to buy a house over here. <laughs> <Yeah. stuff. laughs> you're, you're not far from Gorgo over there. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Area. She lives right down the street, uh, yep. yeah, Gorgo. And uh, uh, who else lives there? The, the guy who makes. Um... Someone told me Heather Locklear's parents are over there near you, too. Really, I know. I know that the um, what is it? The uh, uh, Premio sausage. They yeah, yeah, the yeah. Jim, Jim, <laughs> that's his. That's his wife. But Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's the husband. He's really. I've been over there. He's a good dude. He's a good. He's just still alive. No, no. That I believe the story is. I might have this wrong. That's the wife of Primo Sausage. They got divorced, and that's that's the wife that that lives there. Oh, well, because it's it, it's uh, John. It's a house and a guest house. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they only live there in the summertime. That's yeah. it, really. Yeah, yeah, that's how well they do. Oh, I mean, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of cool people live in Jersey. You know, Thomas Edison was from New Jersey. You know, you can't oh, Billy Joel with uh, uh, Bruce Springsteen. I mean, you can't. You know, you, you can't. You can only not. I'm I'm a New Yorker, so it's kind of like we're taught to hate hate on Jersey. <laughs> that's what you know, why yeah, but, you know, sexual John, liberty as her back turned to him? You know, but, like, you know, when I was well, <laughs> when I was winning shows and everything as a as a pro, I you know, it was Jersey, but the New Yorkers embraced me because there was not there was nobody else in New York at that time that was a big bodybuilder. I was in the Olympia, so I was you know, I'm Italian too, so I was loved by all the Guidos, you know, in Staten Island, <laughs> Manhattan. Yeah. Long Island, you know, so, oh, you're from the East Coast, Northeast, uh, you're Jersey, but we'll accept you. <laughs> it's York. amazing you didn't get to do, like, a fight scene on the Jersey Shore, you know. They're, they're... Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't ask me, I guess. I you could have had an honorary spot on the Jersey Shore. You could have you could have been welcome on the yeah. show. I would have, yeah, I didn't, you know, while, while that show was going on, you know, that was, like, the height of my company as well. We were, I was, like, you're all huge. over the place, you know. Huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, so Roger, did you have any designs of being an actor through the your experience with that, or did you think it was going to lead to? Because you you did do a spinoff, right? The Snooky show. Yeah, yeah. There was a we did four seasons, I think, of the spinoff show, which was uh, you know much toned down family version, I guess. Of didn't have all the drama or all the drinking. It was really about starting a family after the show was really what it was about, and bringing our our daughter was born on the show. Um, but no, there's. There's nothing, uh, I mean, I don't want to insult anybody, so I'm just saying this about myself. There's no talent in reality TV per se. Acting requires a talent, and I'm not I'm not that talented. Although, we got a movie coming out soon. It's called, uh, we got a, uh, me and Frankie actually were both in it. Frankie's got a pretty significant role in it. It's called uh, Bastard Son is, is what it's called, and it was all filmed right around Jersey here. Did a bunch of scenes on the beach in Asbury Park and stuff. But uh, we have uh, the premiere for that, just a private screening premiere coming up uh, a couple weeks. So it'll be out soon, but uh, it's called The Bastard Son. So, yeah, no, I never thought I would be an actor. I never really aspired to be one or tried to be one. But this kind of just organically, we were approached and we both said, fuck it. Why wouldn't we do it? Let's give it a shot, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I keep going back to the fact that you, you kept your job. And I think that's I, – I don't want to gloss over that. I think that's a really huge, important – thing to talk about because a lot of guys get in his and I know uh, Richie knows them. We, we could list off, we could probably list off names like for half an hour of guys who got some fame, got some success through their bodybuilding or through, you know, act or an acting gig or a combination of the two, whatever modeling. And they, they made that everything and, and forgot about everything else. And then of course, like, everything eventually comes to an end and now they're left with zero. Um, you went, it wasn't a, it wasn't a couple of season deal. You went like 10 years. How, what kept you 
from thinking, oh, this is going to be forever and I'm going to quit my job and just be, a, you know, do TV and make make that kind of money. Well, I, th- I think you got to be a little humble. You know, that was never my gig. That was my girlfriend's gig when I met her and then my wife's gig after that. You got to be a little humble. You got to take I, I was never trying to rob her, you know, her um her job or her uh what what she aspired to be i was never trying to take that from her i had my career i had my job and um you know it, it worked out so that the world was interested in us dating and us getting married and us having a child and and seeing that but i never saw it as okay this is my you know i was smart enough to realize for the most part most people do this for 15 minutes and that's it it's a wrap and um so i just always i kept my house i kept my job and in the end you know, I ended. We ended up getting divorced, so it was, it was a good thing that I did that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't have to go back out and reinvent my thing. But you know, I wasn't trying to step on her toes anyway. That was her thing. Um, you know, I dabbled in it a little bit, but I was kind of a weekend warrior most of the time. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I took the safe route, and a lot of people say that that is not. You know, you're never gonna really truly be successful if you take that route, but. I sleep well at night, you know, I sleep good at night knowing that, you know, I've got a really good benefit package for my kids and, you know, got a good job and I know what I'm doing. I never have to worry about where my next meal is coming from. And I, I think sometimes you get illusions of grandeur and you think you're the next Tom Cruise, which a lot of people do. You end up living in mom and dad's basement the rest of your life. And I never wanted to do that. So, yeah. Unless you're a reality show like uh, Kim Kardashian, who that's she, she, she that's made a big. Oh, that's one in a billion. And I'm not I'm not tooting her horn or giving her accolades because certainly could, yeah. I could give her a lot of criticism like we all could. But that's one in a million. Nobody makes it to that success level. Yeah. Like the, from I mean, reality, she made it yeah. so big. Yeah. And, and and she's just well, that whole family is just making tons of money, yep. you know, and it all stemmed from her doing that reality show. You know, and it's- Ky- Kylie Jenner is the most followed human on instagram yep is she yeah i thought it was the rock the rock is the, the the rock is the most followed actor oh wow she's the most followed human <laughs> of all the people she's the most <laughs> no i take that back she's not the um football player uh the soccer player cristiano somebody yeah. he's he's number one i think she's number three but um but of all women, I think she's the number of all women. She's the number one most. And I don't even get how she is the most followed number three, you know, in all Instagram, she's the number three. I mean, we're talking 470 plus million people. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. 330 in, in the whole United States. I mean, you're talking about, you know, a global reach. That's just insane. And, and for what, you know, and, and, there's two aspects of that, in my opinion. There's the fame, which a lot of people, you know, they 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 spend their life chasing that. A lot of people think being famous is the most amazing thing ever. And the other aspect of it is they're billionaires. But would you, gentlemen, would you would you trade your position in life now to be one of them? I never would, ever. No. It, now, it's I wouldn't want your whole... scrutiny. I wouldn't want that. They can never be normal, ever. I, I, I could be, totally be normal at any time I want, you know? Yeah, yeah. What is you, you know, so Raja, I mean, you, you have a, you have a good following, you have a high following. Um, that's all from, you know, Jersey shore. Right? And so, you know, with that, of course, that still gives you, I mean, you know, because I, and I have a decent following and it gives you this kind of like, you know, fame through, you know, your social media fame, because people will come up to me and say, Oh, you're rich Gasparia. You know, I follow you on Instagram and it's, and it's a guy that, or it's, it, I normally have like older, you know, uh, people that follow me that are into bodybuilding, but then you have actually young kids that follow me because of my career as a bodybuilder and they follow my old pictures and stuff, or they're part of the brand, but it's just interesting how you you become famous through social media. It's just a different, you know, fame. It's something all, all on its own. You know, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like its own animal and, and it's not always all good either. Um, you know, certainly there's some some noti- no, no, notoriety of it, but also, you know, there's there's no place like the internet for people being brutally cruel. You know what I mean? It's like people think that they just have uh, the right to say and do whatever they want on social media. So, uh, you know, I chose to stay on board. I had a choice to make, 
you know, after I left that, that, that world, I guess, if you will, um, stay on board and stay, you know, stay on the internet and, uh, keep, keep my face out there in the public or, or get the fuck up, you know, off the tracks. And I chose to stay on. So, you know, it comes with a certain amount of scrutiny, o- obviously, you know, after you get divorced too, there's a lot of people that want to make and choose sides and that sort of thing. And I mean, we're well beyond that at this point, but certainly it happened. And, um, I think that you, you got to have tough skin and, you know, you're, you're a dad, Rich. I don't know if you are John, but you know, there comes, there comes a point where your kids get on the internet and you have to determine, you know, as a parent, what their personality type is like. And if they're not, they don't have a lot of, uh, mental toughness in them, which some kids just don't. I mean, you know, then then the internet is not a great place for them and you have to decide whether your kids, you know, ready for it or not, you know, and I'm starting to experience that now. You definitely have to have a thick skin. I got to tell you, I I developed a thick skin because you got to remember I was competing on stage in, in, in underwear with people criticizing how I looked. So, and you know, you didn't, you know, they would criticize you. So I was like, I definitely needed a thick skin. So when you go on, social media you got these idiots making comments on your on your posts and you just have to you know you have to laugh at it but you're right as a young kid they can look at it and there's you know you're seeing you know young uh, kids committing suicide from you know bullying from you know social media so it's it's something that i never thought of you know i I didn't grow up in that you know with being on social media as a kid yeah it's not something i deal with because i'm I'm not a professional at anything but you know, my podcast partner, Frankie, I see it with him and, you know, uh, I feel like I'm interviewing here, you here, Rich, but, uh, um, you know, you were at the, the height of bodybuilding, the very pinnacle of, of, of it, you know, and to get critiqued by average Joes that with big beer bellies and stuff has, you got to have thick skin to be able to, you know, deal with that. I see Frankie deal with it all the time with, you know, these armchair fucking fighters that these quarter armchair quarterbacks after he has a maybe a rough fight or you know critiquing him and you should have done this you should have done this and sometimes yeah. I even see it in person and i'm like bro you have no business telling that man to, what he should or should. but you got to watch yourself because these are your fans too you know you gotta gotta yeah. have to take it with a grain of salt because they are the people at the end of the day that 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 made you famous you know so it's a tough it's a tough line to walk i'm sure no, it's it's like you said, it's funny. You have people that critique you, but then a lot of times instead of myself saying something, you have the fans that are your fans saying, How can you say this about a guy who's like one of the best in the world and blah blah blah? You know, you'll you'll see them defend me. Yeah. So I laugh at I, I laugh at that. But you're right, it's you know, you have to have a thick skin and these guys just it's a different world. What's even worse, I don't know if you're on are you, Roger, are you on TikTok? I, I am. I don't post a lot, um, no. but I'm on it. I, that's I, that's horrible. Worse than Instagram because there, all you do is have haters on there. It's like it, like I'll do a really good post and I'll post it then on on uh, TikTok and it'll be you know I think wow this one really did well on Instagram. Totally the opposite on TikTok. You know, be like <laughs> they say they say if you're like average on Instagram, you just got like average following. You're immediately a superstar on, on TikTok because yeah, I, guess, I guess it's way easier to get clout or followers over there. But you can, but you you have to be really consistent. Yeah, doing three four posts a day. It's almost like it's got to be a job. And and like yourself, I'm I'm you know, I'm taking some of my Instagram and putting them on TikTok. I w- I was doing like you know personal ones for TikTok. I go, I gotta work and stuff. I can't just be doing four TikToks a day. Right, you know, right. to try to make myself popular. And then is it really making me money? I mean, these, these some of these guys that have millions of followers you actually get money from it. But I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make money doing this. <laughs> but it helps you because you promote your brand, you know. So well, it's all about it's all about promoting the brand. It's all about promoting what I do. You're right. So I, that's the reason. I mean, I'm my age group is not on social media, you know, but I do it because I have to because of my brand. Otherwise, you know, I talk to people that are my age group. And they're like, oh, I don't even have a, an Instagram, or you know, they they all have they all have Facebook. They all yeah, have, yeah, yeah. Older people have Facebook. That's the truth. Yeah, older people. Yeah, have Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and then, yeah, and then the young kid. You know, because <laughs> what was going on is a couple of years. You know, two years ago, I was like seeing TikTok with my daughter, and I go, "What's this silly TikTok with with um 
you know, people watching people dance, you know, on TikTok. And I'm like, it's stupid. But now in looking at it, it, it's become a very powerful tool in marketing, you know, your brand or whatever you're doing. It, it's 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 not a joke anymore where TikTok has become much more important to use as a social media tool for any business. Now you go on there, there's a many, many ads on there. Um, so it's it's different than it was a couple of years ago where people are just doing these silly dances. Certainly. <laughs> world than when i grew up we had uh channel 257 and pbs is what i had yes. <laughs> That's what and, then, I... and then it was it was a big day in my house when uh, my parents got got us an atari it was a big day yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, Damn, um, it's, that's everything that I dealt with. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, thought I, yeah. was, I thought I was living in the future playing Frogger, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or remember space. when cable first came out? We went from the antenna to cable. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. 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 I talked to my son yeah. about those pivotal changes in, in human history, like the invention of, you know, he doesn't know what it, like, a, a, an eight track is ask anybody you know people what an eight track is right? well, how about the how about the phone mounted to the wall with the 20 foot cord that would get all <laughs> up and half choke you out when you're on it right. <laughs> and like the first cell phone was like a car battery with yes, a phone was. attached to it yep. you know it would handle anyway so you grew up in maine did you grow up in the city in the country what, what was your childhood what, what, what was that a tiny little town called cherryfield maine there's about 800 people in my town and that was you know, I was born in 75 and there's still 800 people in that. <laughs> the same uh, 800. <laughs> oh, not one bit. I uh, grew up hunting, fishing, you know, very much outdoors, riding quads, dirt bikes, all that sort of stuff. There was, uh, you know, my town was called Cherryfield, but there were seven different towns that went to my high school. So seven towns wow. in high school and there was only about 350 kids in the entire high school. So, so you grew up then with the classic work ethic that, you know, Richie and I were slaved into at, at a young age, right? So I grew, up, grew up working for my dad, pumping gas from the time I was old enough to walk to all through high school. And then when I graduated high school, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to college. So my dad said, you're going to Alaska working on a fishing boat. So at 18, I was in the Bering Sea working on a fishing boat. Wow. wow. That was kind of cool, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did you get seasick a lot? One day, uh, one day we had massive swells, and you literally could stand on the wall for a second. I got a little sick, but they, <laughs> you're working. They don't care. They don't give you off. I worked on a <laughs> was it was very glorious. You know that that show the the crabbing show. Yeah, yeah, deadliest Maybe catch, deadliest catch. Everybody fell in love with fishing in the Bering Sea from that show. My job wasn't glorious like that. I worked on a big processor, so we we did haul bags of big seine bags of pollock. And we'd pull them up on our processor boat and we would process them. And we made a product called Surimi, which we sold to the Japanese. But uh, yeah, very labor intensive. And it was it was 47 days out on the Bering Sea. Never saw land, you know. So so you make the fake crab right there on the boat and it's yep. freeze. Wow, that's incredible. And that you don't, don't, huge, don't huge. go in like the crabbers go the crabbers fish for maybe a week or 10 days or two weeks. And they go in and offload. We stayed out. 600 miles off of Russia, in the middle of the Bering Sea. We were out there for 47 days, my first trip that I did. We would offload right at sea onto Japanese tramper boats and go right back to fishing. So you didn't see land for a month and a half. Isn't it funny that fake crab and real crab comes from the same place? <laughs> <laughs> one's a fish and one's an actual crab. <laughs> one's a lot of what, kind of, what kind of fish is it? It was pollock, but I'm oh, not pollock, sure. pollock, pollock. I'm not sure if that's the only fish they use because uh, the second season, and I believe we made the same product the second season I went, but we went off the uh, like the Oregon River, off like California, um, and we caught hake the second season. There wasn't as much money in it because they weren't um, they weren't uh, they didn't have the roe, they didn't have the fish eggs. The pollock in Alaska, they harvested the the roe, the fish eggs, and that was a big money maker. So we made, you know, I was like 18 years old. This is like February of '93 or '94. And I came home with like almost 20 grand, I think like 18 grand in, in a month and a half. So wow. for a teen year old kid in a little town of Maine, that was pretty damn good money back then, you know? That's going all the way to the West Coast. So you went from Maine all the way to the well, West we, Coast and to Alaska. Yeah, I flew to Seattle, Washington, and the boat was kept right in Seattle Harbor. And then you go up, it's like a three day cruise through what they call the inside passage up to Alaska. 
and then you get to Dutch Harbor and then you wait till they fire the gun or blow the fucking horn or whatever they do. The fishing season starts and then you just go until the fishing season's over. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's How that, do you go cool. about getting that job? I mean, what you you're living in a small town in Maine, and you get a job on a fishing boat in Oregon. How do you, how do you do that? So there was uh there was a there was a well Maine's a big fishing you know it's uh, the main shoreline is huge for fishing too lobster fishing being probably the biggest. But uh, when I was a kid, they started harvesting um, sea urchins to to the, you know the row like you'll see it on top of sushi. Mm-hmm. The whole Bro, that became a big thing when I was a kid. A lot of my friends got their diver's license and were making like three grand in a weekend going diving on sea urchins, you know. He ended up moving to the West Coast and he bought a line of fishing boats from Japan and he started a business called Supreme Alaskan Seafood and he went crabbing. I mean, sorry, he went, uh, not crabbing, he went uh, fishing for Pollock and that's that was, my dad linked me up with him and I did two seasons. Wow. Cool. <laughs> you, you won't find, uh, you think you, how old were you? 20 what? No, 18. 18. You won't find 18 year old kids doing that today. No, definitely that's not. A, that's a, I mean, we were all on the same page, us three on the, what happened to the younger generation with work ethic and it's just a different world. Totally. You know? totally Cause you're in, we're, we're in business and you got to deal with these people, you know, and, and it's, and it's dealing with, with people who believe that subpar work is acceptable, that, you know, they're satisfied with doing the minimum. It's okay not to care. Just punch the clock and get paid. You know, th- these are just terrible, terrible tenets of, of work ethic. And and it, it, it harms business because you guys like Richie and me who, who are, and, and you, who are, you know, raised that way to understand what it means to work. And then you you can't even you can't even translate that word work because work to them means something totally different than it means to you. Work to them is a little bit of effort, fifteen minutes on the phone, use the bathroom, come back, do it a little bit more for five minutes, use the phone. Whereas you know we're like head down, barreling out for you know four hours, and then you know lunch, and then four hours. You know what I mean? It's I, I'm a little, I'm a little worried, and here's why: because I, I, you know, I remember my childhood very vividly. My mom ruled with an iron fist. My mom was a disciplinarian. My dad was working his ass off to build the business. He was, he came home long enough to eat dinner with us, and went right, went right back to work. But my mom was a disciplinarian. We had chores from an early age. We were working. You know, I was, I had to go. You know, after, as soon as I got home from school, I was in the garden. Had to go get chicken eggs. Had to, had to do all this shit, and I was grinding. We were, we were always kept busy and always like you always had the I always had the fear of my mother like if I did something wrong she was gonna I'm 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 a pussy of a dad I'm scared that I'm raising I'm gonna raise little wimp I'm not as hard as all my kids (laughs) as my parents were on me and I'm like am I doing my kids a disservice I don't know you know I'm confused I'm conflicted if I'm doing the wrong thing you know And and if you try to push yourself too much I mean you my my daughter's fifteen, so it's a little harder. And that age is very difficult. If you're sitting there being that hard ass, it it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> <Tell me. Yeah. laughs> well, it depends on where you started. I mean, you know, yeah. if the only memory they have of you is a hard ass, it's it's yeah, it's 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 hard to be anything else. But no, it's challenging today. I was just, I mean, every time I, we get a guest or you know run into somebody who's like close to our age and has been you know raised in the same or has the same, we, we tend to end up having the same beliefs, the same values. We're on the same page with a lot of things politically so and socially. And it just, I, I think it all just goes back to that. I mean, we were raised like Americans, you know, a bit, a hardcore. And, I said, that's another thing I tell John, you know, John's from South Carolina, very conservative. And I say, you know, you got Jersey, which is a liberal state, but then where we live, Roger is very conservative. I go, this is, this is like, it's like we're our own state within our state. (laughs) And it's, I love it. It's like, you know, some people that come here to visit me, they're like, wow, this is really conservative. Like, and this is Jersey. I go, yeah, this is just, this is a part of Jersey that's separate from all the 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 rest. Best kept secret, and I want to keep it that way. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's what we say. Our county. That's what we say here in Lexington. Don't tell anybody. We don't <laughs> want any more poor people moving here. Yep, exactly. Yeah, but well, it's been really, been really cool to have you on the show. Yeah. Appreciate Roger. you guys, man. Thank you for having me on. It's been and, fun. Um, I'm, I'm excited to get on your show. I think it's we're yeah. we're going on in uh, when is it? Um, 
another couple of weeks, right? I'll look on the calendar, but I don't think you're not not next Tuesday or the two not uh, yeah. yeah not next Tuesday or the following Tuesday. I believe you're on yeah because I I got to go to India, so yep. <laughs> it's right before I go to India. Yeah, but uh, very cool. Thank you so much for being on the show. And like I said, we're gonna get a workout together. You know, yeah. one of these days. That'll be awesome. Yeah. And I'm excited to get on the show with you and uh, Frankie. Yep. So to have you on. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, guys, with the end of this show, it was great having Roger on, Rich. It's it's uh, we don't usually get people from your neck of the woods. So no, I, I you know I just thought it was I thought it was interesting you know to get Roger because you know we we communicate you know through like you know Instagram. Um, I've gotten his number, then we started talking, and I don't know if you know John. We're I'm I'm doing a uh, I have a documentary that just that's getting released. Um, so actually, Roger, he, Roger was actually spoken to because he's a fan of bodybuilding and he's, a, you know, one of my fans. So he's actually on my documentary interviewed, you know, so uh, this might surprise you, but I am, too. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so very cool. I, but I don't I don't think that our, our fans know about, you know, our. No, you know, our no, this is, you know, this is and this guy's no joke, man. He's done so he's done some some big, uh, you know, some decent size, you know, films before. So. Um, this, I'm this very excited for you. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Um, it gets released um, in December. So if any of you guys want to know, it's being released. It's uh, it's a documentary on myself. John was interviewed. Well, you were interviewed, so I didn't even know he, that. In you were fact, he said he said my description of you was the best of of anybody's that really that he interviewed. So, so Roger was also one of the one of the people who was interviewed. More cool. so from outside because we really we've never hung out, but I guess from what he portrays me at, he's from Jersey. I'm from Jersey, so so then we got to talking, and that's why I said, you know, let's you know, we'd love to get you on the podcast. I know you're not, you know, in bodybuilding, but it it he's you know he does have a he has a really big following from the Jersey Shore, yeah. and, and he's a really and he is a really really nice guy, as you can see. Yeah, he is, and you know. <laughs> Just that affiliation with Jersey Shore, I think, oh, this guy's going to be an asshole. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> he's totally. a regular guy. He was, he was 100% the opposite of what I, I thought he was going to be. I was very very happy that to, that, that worked out that way. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of the other guys would have been different, but uh, you know, he was. Well, you because you don't know. I mean, you know, that's why I asked the reality question. You know, it's 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 like I don't is that, are they, is that an act? Is is the situation really like that in real life? Is and now you know, now you realize that it is them. It's yeah, really them. Yeah, it is really. Them. But you know, <laughs> but like that com like the comment I made about the Jersey girls, man. It's it's the truth that yeah. you know. I mean, and and that show punctuates it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it really yeah. does. Anyway, sorry, Jersey. Thank girl. you, guys. Uh, on yourself. Another, I think this was an interesting show, and it yeah, this was a good different one. from what we do. And and but it's like I said, I love to bring in different guests, and I have a couple other different guests that we're going to have. You know, yep. John, that I told you about. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be really cool to um, go outside the box and the, yeah. you know, just our bodybuilding, you know, uh, friends that we normally have on the show. You know, it's. I think it's good that we do that and broaden the scope because we should be able to talk about anything. Like what, like Joe Rogan, for example, has you know ten million over ten million people watch that show. Um, that, that's more than that's more than cable news put together. You know, yeah. all, all of them: CNN, NBC, CBC, MSNBC, Fox, all together don't equal what, what the reach that he's got. And he doesn't have a niche. He talks to everybody about everything, right? He does. Yeah. And I'd love to get on that show. I I'm actually getting on a podcast and we we'll probably make this show a little long, you know, value entertainment, value no. entertainment. Um, I've heard the name. It's the guy. He, I mean, he's, he's interviewed Mike Tyson, Shaquille O'Neal. Um, oh, you know, oh I, the guy, bet, the guy, bet Davis is his last name. The guy. Yeah. He, he interviews yeah. like everybody. I mean, everybody so through the guy who filmed uh you know my documentary he knows um the that host did. of the value entertainment right. so they're interested in having me on the show oh cool that's, that's going to be a really that's a really well followed um yeah you know podcast yeah he's, he's had he interviewed dorian he interviewed i, I watched a few of his dorian yeah. ronnie coleman but other people like out of 
big celebrities outside. Oh, oh of, he, he, you know, I, I just listened to an interview he did with um, the guy who played, not played, the the guy who was Donnie Brasco. The oh, real wow. FBI the real Donnie agent. Brasco. The real guy who who The real guy who, who was Donnie Brasco. The, under, the undercover FBI agent. Yeah, the undercover. Right. And I was just listening. That was an amazing story. The guy wow. the, the guy went up to cover for six years. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's crazy. Nuts. <laughs> that that was a great story. And and the yeah, that's a cool story. Yeah. So, anyways, Eddie guys, I know we we made this show much longer than we normally we normally go. Again, you know, you want to come up with some really cool content. Remember, subscribe, subscribe. Give us con comments. Give us ideas and guests. You know, like the have, show. Give us some thumbs up. You know, yeah, tell your all friends. That. Yeah, and, uh, and we've been John. We've been consistent. We're keeping this show weekly. Yep. You know, so we want to make sure we do it. And we and we, I have a you know, like I said, we're going to continue doing this and having fun growing this show. Yeah, it was it was a great show today. I had a lot, I had a lot of fun. So cool. thanks for getting him. Thank All right, you. guys, that's it. We'll see you next week. See you next week.